Welcome to the Power on Heels Fund Incorporated as we present this virtual masterclass as part of our series of the COVID-19 Financial Summit, Reestablishing Financial Security Aim the Crisis. I am Yvette Mayo, the founder and CEO of Power on Heels Fund Incorporated and the CEO of Yo Soy I Am LLC. Power on Heels Fund Incorporated is focused on minimizing the impact of gender pay gap inequity and the advancement of Latinas in the marketplace by providing specialized training programs, mentorship, and scholarships that are designed to enhance the earning potential, accelerate professional growth, and cultivate future leaders. Stay connected to Power on Heels on all our social media platforms, and please visit our website at poweronheelsfund.org. Stay informed and stay plugged in. There you can have all the information on our current events and all our efforts. The COVID-19 Financial Virtual Masterclasses are filled with industry experts and change agents sharing information to help you create smart financial strategies during these difficult times. Following reliable information and sound fact-based advice will go a long way in helping you achieve your financial goals. Remember, your financial mastery is about how you live and lead. Welcome to this virtual masterclass, Melissa Vela, who is a Workplace Solutions Officer at BBVA. Thank you for having me today. I'm very excited to present about financials and banking during this very uncertain time, COVID-19. And so before I begin talking about banking, I want to make sure to remind you that BBVA does fundraise for Power on Heels. And we've been collaborating since uh, for about a year or two, and we wanted to give back to the community. And a way to give back to Power on Heels is by signing up with a free account I wanted to let you know that BBVA fundraises for Power on Heel. If you could bank for a cause, would you? Power on Heels receives royalty payments for every supporter that opens up a BBVA checking account. The Power on Heels code is 141272. If you're interested in helping Power on Heels and you open up a checking account, we will give Power on Heels $50 per supporter. Not only that, Power on Heels does receive a portion of any debit card transactions that you use with your BBVA debit card. In order for this to happen, you need five qualifying transactions within 60 days, and then BBVA will deposit a $50 royalty payment into will receive 0.25 percent of the purchases will go back to power on heels and this can go into the scholarship fund or you know whatever power on heels fund decides to do um, with it that's one way BBVA gives back to the community and to this organization if you have any questions go to bbvausa.com and then um, sign up for your account or contact me and we can make an appointment at your local branch. So let's transition into what's happening in the banking world. Well, as you can imagine, it, you know, our world has also been turned upside down. Banking is considered an essential service and at BBVA, we have been working nonstop to try to not only Think about the health of our employees and our customers, but also continue to provide the services that our customers need. And so, you know, things that you might find that are new at your financial institution is that we are prioritizing customers and employee health. What does that mean? So, you know, some institutions have installed the plastic face shields so that there's some level, a degree of separation. Uh, we've doubled down on sanitizing the branches, uh, the drive-throughs, and um, we've given hand sanitizer so our, when our customers come in that they can sanitize their hands and our employees as well. Um, with that, you know, you might 
see that we have updated lobby hours procedures not only inside but in the drive through as well. So I can speak for BBVA right now, we're closed on Saturdays, which is something new. And um, we're also closed in the lobbies. They are available should you need to make an appointment or you know close on uh, some kind of loan where you need to go in and sign documents. But the way we do our business has changed. Uh, we are doing, operating the drive through business as usual. And even, you know, we are processing some exceptions in the drive-thru, things that you maybe normally couldn't do in the drive-thru where you, you had to come into the lobby. We're making exceptions now where you can do business through the drive-thru. So um, another thing that has been very important for BBVA during this time and for, I'm assuming, other financial institutions in the community as well, is that we've been prioritizing small businesses. And, um, you know, this is huge because this is the heartbeat of our economy, right? And so we have put a focus and priority on processing PPP loans, SBA loan applications before we do anything else at the bank. And what does this mean? What does that mean? The first day business owners could go in to apply. BBVA was up and ready with our portal. We had it accessible to our business banking customers on their online banking. Um, we had it accessible to them. And we just saw a surge of applications like we've never seen before. In a matter of a couple of hours, just to put things into perspective, we received over 10,000 applications when regularly in one day we would maybe receive around 300. So that just puts it into perspective how many people in our community were needing this service and BBVA was up and ready with their portal that first day. As you can imagine, it overwhelmed our system, it overwhelmed our website, and we had to shut it down. But we knew from the beginning that BBVA was going to put processing these applications before anything else. So we put on pause, um, you know, processing any other kind of loan, whether it be, you know, personal or auto. We put those things on pause so that we could go through all of those applications that we received that first day. And as you, as you can imagine, um, you know, when the second wave came in, we went ahead and still continued to process those applications before anything else. And we, we had a lot of employees volunteering their time uh, to process these applications. So something else that has become or resulted from this new environment that we're in is the digitalization of how you do banking. And so for us at BBVA, we have really emphasized our customers to use the mobile application. And what that means is that, you know, services that you would usually come into a lobby to do, maybe, you know, renew a CD or open up a money market or apply for a loan, those kind of services that you would usually set an appointment and go into your branch to do. We were now offering to do it online via your mobile app, which was something new. And so this happened very quickly and these services, you know, getting them into our mobile banking usually take, you know, month or years to actually get approved and to, you know, go live. But these projects had to be worked, you know, overnight and it was a priority because we had to quickly adapt how to do business. Otherwise, we would have to, you know, stay behind and, and get left behind. So, you know, digitalization has been huge. We've been outreaching uh, to our customers, letting them know of these new ways to do business. And I can almost guarantee you that this new way of doing business is going to stick around for the long run. You know, things aren't go back to what they were in the past. Now, because of COVID-19 and the economy and, and you know social distancing this has led us to be more digital and it's, it's like a digital revolution and so moving forward you know you will now have even when things go back to normal you will now have more ways of being able to do your banking 
Something else that has happened during COVID-19 is that creditors or lenders have been offering consideration of uh, fee refunds or skipping payments for loans. And so that is also new. And you know, the unemployment rates have, have skyrocketed you know, in the United States. And your lenders are aware of that. You know, many of us have found ourselves being furloughed or you know, just losing our job or you know, being impacted if you're a, a small business and you're the sole owner, you know, sales are being impacted. So your lenders know that. And, and so they have been um, refunding fees, overdraft fees or late payment fees and skipping payments maybe one to three months in advance as a courtesy of a 19 situation. Something else that has uh, come about is special promotions. You know, you might find yourself seeing a special promotion if you want to take out a loan. You know, rates are now lower than ever, or perhaps there's a special promotion on um, interest bearing accounts. So, you know, things are now, if you've ever been in the market uh, or have been waiting to hold off to maybe buy a car or buy a, a buy, buy a house, you know, now more than ever, the rates are lower, the, the prices are dropping. So if you've been waiting or, you know, considering to make a move, now's the time to do it because there's a lot of promotions going on to stimulate the economy. And, you know, same thing, um, and that goes hand in hand, you know, when rates are low it's perfect if you're a, a borrower and you're seeking to borrow money um, it, it's great for you right take advantage of that but you know it's a paradox because interest bearing accounts rates have dropped as well so you might not be making as much money in your interest bearing accounts as you used to but you know this is temporary so keep that in mind Another thing that's been happening in banking um, is that perhaps financial institutions are implementing updated requirements if you are seeking for loans. So maybe in the past, a credit score needed to be a, a certain amount to get approved for a loan. And now, after this situation, you might find that that credit score might have been uh, increased in order to, to qualify for, for a loan. Or maybe in the past, part of the stipulations are getting approved is to provide, you know, two weeks of pay stubs. And now they're wanting more. So uh, requirements for, for lending have changed. And, you know, I would, if you have more questions, I would suggest you talk with your financial institution to see, you know, what those changes have been and how that's going to affect you. Something else that um, has happened with COVID-19 is that the uh, president issued stimulus checks and um, you know this is new to to banking so financial institutions are having to see what their policies and procedures to these stimulus checks are going to be and so you know for some of us, the stimulus checks were being direct deposited if you um, did your taxes in 2018 or 2019 with a direct deposit with your checking account. And if you had that checking account still open and active, your stimulus check would go into there and no problem. You received your money, you're good to go. And you know, you're either saving it or stimulating the economy and spending it, right? But for those of us that file taxes and maybe changed our account number or didn't file at all, at all, these stimulus checks are now being mailed out. And so what does that mean? Uh, you know, what's the process in receiving this check? Are you going to be able to deposit it, to cash it? Uh, are they going to put a hold on it? So there has been some, you know, new policies around stimulus checks and each one financial institution varies just a little bit, you know, so I would recommend you reaching out to your financial institution and seeing what they're doing with the stimulus checks and how that affects you. And earlier I did speak about the SBA and the PPP loans that um, this has been such a priority 
for the bank and for the community. And I can say that we've been working and prioritizing SBA and PPP loans on top of anything else that we do. And that is the focus. And we know and are aware that um, this is how we're going to get the economy back up and going. And so that has been a priority above all things. So a few things um, that you should consider during this time and, you know, you can take this as a to-do list is number one, get organized, right? We want to make sure that now more than ever, you're clear about where you stand with your finances. So I would advise to, you know, get a sheet of paper and write things down. What are all the things that you owe? Who are your creditors? What monthly payments do you have? So I would advise that you write, you know, the name of who you owe, how much your monthly payment is, what's your interest rate, and, um, you know, what your payment date is. And so from there, you can start getting a clearer picture of how much money uh, you pay each month in, in debt, right? And so with that, you could also contact your creditors to see what kind of special programs or assistance programs they're offering. So if you can take advantage of skipping a payment for one or two months, you know, do that. Or if you can take advantage of consolidating your debt so that you have extra money at the end of the month that you could either use to make more money, save it, or um, to get rid of your debt, as a whole, um, now's the time to do that. So with consolidating debt, you want to look at how you're going to lower your overall monthly payments, shop rates. It's important to shop rates um, so that you can save money. And while you're doing this, I would suggest that you get quotes for, let's say that you do get a debt consolidation loan. What would be the monthly payments if I were to choose to pay off, you know, this debt or this loan in 12 months. 20 of that is that now more than ever, you need to strategize on how you're going to be financially okay. And so with that, you can um, save money. If you, if you don't have an emergency savings fund, now's the time to set it. Um, to start it, so have a little extra cash at the end of the month left over. It could go to that, or if you can't refinance anything for whatever the reason, um, then another way to set money aside is by using direct deposit. If you are fortunate enough to still be receiving a paycheck, you could. Talk to your employer and tell them to put a certain amount um, to a direct deposit into either directly your savings or a separate account that's not the one that you use for your everyday expenses. And then that way you know every time you get a paycheck, $25, $50, $100 are being put set aside into that direct deposit account without you having to go in there and do it yourself. So kind of doing it for you and it helps you um, save. And if it's a separate account that you don't usually use for your everyday spending and it's a separate institution, maybe it's a separate financial institution from your everyday uh, spending, it's sometimes easier, you know, out of sight, out of mind, you're not going to touch it, it's set aside. And then should you need it, should you need it or should you be in a bind, you know you have a little extra savings there. Um, when we talked about refinancing or consolidating your debt, I'm not only talking about your personal debt, your credit cards or personal loans. I'm also talking about, you know, home loans or auto loans. So rates are lower than ever. And so consider, consider refinancing your mortgage, you know, ask your mortgage company what rate you have. Are you paying for um, private mortgage insurance and can you refinance and when you're when you're asking these questions of ref, um, you know can I refinance my home same thing get those monthly quotes to see if you um, can either shorten the time 
that you'll you'll need to pay off your home. So maybe if you have a 30 year mortgage, if you refinance it for a lower term, maybe 20 or 15 years, and your payment stays the same because the rates are so are so low, then maybe you are saving time, right? You're getting out of debt sooner, uh, 10 or 15 years sooner than, than expected. So think about that for your mortgage. Or um, maybe it's that the payment stays the same, but you get out of it quicker. Or that you're just lowering the rate and your payment is now cheaper, but you you know have the same term. You keep it at you keep it at 30 years, but now your mortgage payment is cheaper, and so that will lead you to having extra money at the end of the month. So now's the time uh, to investigate that just for your financial peace um, during this time. And also um, reviewing your investments. You know, if, you, if you're in the investment market, you're aware of the risk that you take. And the people um, in the investment market, you know, they know that it, they're in this for the long run. It's not just right now. And so when you're doing investments, make sure that you speak with your financial advisor and you make adjustments as needed based on your risk tolerance, right? Because everybody is in different stages of life and everybody has a different risk tolerance. So again, speak with your financial advisor and make the adjustments needed for your investments. And this also uh, can be about your 401k, right? Don't panic if your 401k or your retirement savings has you know, dramatically dropped. It has for everybody, but know that this is temporary and you would can recover with time. Something that's not on this slide, but I'd like to include is that, you know, now's the time to write or update your will and your living will. Because during COVID-19, they haven't been allowing uh, visitors into the hospital. You know, usually the family members there, if, if you're in a grave uh, stage uh, or you're very ill. So now you're just in there alone by yourself. And so now's a great time to update or write uh, your will and your living will. With that, I want to leave you with my contact information. Um, the link to my website is up above with my email and my phone number is down below. You know, I'm very passionate, passionate about Power on Heels. This is very near and dear to me and I really want you to feel that I'm here as a resource. So if you have any questions or if you want to recommend a family member, your sister, or your friends, please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to help you in any way that I can. With that, that is the end of my financial update. Thank you so much. Thank you and gracias to you, Melissa Vela. This was important information for everyone to receive. I am super excited because you provided a great perspective. You provided great resources as well as information. Whoever tunes in is certain to understand their financial situation and take new strides to become more successful in their finances. So thank you for this. And thank you for um, tuning in. Stay connected with the Power on Heels Fund, Inc. on all our social media platforms and visit our website at poweronheelsfund.org. Stay informed and plugged in on all our efforts and all our events. The COVID-19 Financial Summit Masterclasses are filled with industry experts and change agents sharing information to help you create smart financial strategies during these difficult times. Gracias and thank you for joining us. And remember, you are power on heels.